This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. And for the final time this year. That's right. This is our last official show together. Yes. Like How many people are going to say as we leave the, the uh, studio today, see you next year? Yeah, right? Most. It's going to be the most like overused quote of the whole day. I think so. See you next yes. year. It's see fun next year. though, right? You only yes. get to do it once. Hey, live it up. That's right. Live, live it, up. it up. Are we going to be living up outside today, you think? Uh, you know, for the morning commute, there's going to be a little bit of patchy fog out there. The visibilities will be reduced just just a little bit, particularly around areas of uh, Charlotte Harbor. Um, will it become extremely dense? Well, there's that possibility, especially down to the south there around uh, areas of Venice, Minglewood, Punta Gorda, Charlotte Harbor. Around all across that region, there is the potential for some thicker fog. But uh, right now, we're holding at a half mile visibility, which is not too bad. Uh, around Punta Gorda. In Sarasota at the airport, we're reporting four mile visibility, which is just fine. Thank you very much. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll let you know what those visibilities do. Right now, there is no dense fog advisory up for our area, inland or near the coast. Temperature is a little bit cooler, and that is in part one of the reasons that we do have that little bit of extra fog around. Plus, areas to the south are a little bit more in the clear in terms of sky cloud cover. Uh, our area does have a little bit of uh, cloud cover from about Tampa Bay northward. It's a little bit thicker, but from the south, a little bit quieter. As far as our forecast goes for today, look for slightly cooler temperatures. By 7 o'clock this morning, patchy fog starts to lift with dawn, 61 degrees. And then as we head into the afternoon hours, we'll be about 5 degrees cooler than we were yesterday. And yesterday we were cooler than the day before. And that trend will really kick in on the first day of the new year. We'll talk about that in a few. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking the roads, a little blip there on 301 as you leave downtown Bradenton. Otherwise, very clear right now in Manatee County. Farther south in the northern half of Sarasota County. Some uh, congestion there at the, the, the diverging diamond by Lakewood Ranch in both directions. Also on Clark Road as you get off the interstate. And also way out there in Clark Road as well. Way out 72. South County, some uh, small blips either way on 41. Otherwise all clear at 502 on your Friday morning. Our top story this morning, at least 12 people, including a child, died in a devastating and incredibly quick spreading apartment fire in the Bronx. It is now one of the worst fires in New York's history. ABC News has the story. The five alarm fire broke out just before 7 p.m. Thursday evening inside an apartment building in the Bronx. Fire in a multiple dwelling on uh, multiple floors. The flames erupted on the first floor of the five story building, but quickly spread to the upper floors, fueled by gusting winds. The fire department arrived in minutes. Eventually, more than 160 firefighters were on the scene performing CPR on victims as they were pulled from the inferno. They were burned. Even little kids in the stretches burned. The fire was brought under control just after 9 p.m., but not before claiming at least a dozen lives. The youngest victim, just one year old. The oldest, over 50. Three of the victims, members of the same family. This is the worst fire tragedy we have seen in this city in at least a quarter century. Based on the information we have now, this will rank as one of the worst losses of life to a fire in many, many years. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio praised the fire department for their quick response. At least 12 people were rescued and will survive. The scope of the tragedy struck even veterans. In a department that's certainly no stranger to tragedy, we're shocked by this loss. Investigators are on the scene, but fire officials say it's too early to determine the cause of the fire. Todd Ant, ABC News, New York. An update now in Sarasota, where traffic will soon be reduced to one southbound lane on US 41 between 10th and 14th Street. And it's also construction on a new roundabout can ramp up. Our Marla Spence joins us live now right there from US 41. Marla? Good morning, Stephanie and Ray. That's right. Two new roundabouts here in Sarasota are expected to sit right here on US 41 between 10th and 14th Street, and they're expected to last through mid 2019. Now, the first steps to constructing the new roundabout will begin with the removal of a median that's expected to start the second week of January to allow traffic to flow smoothly through this holiday travel period. Now, FDOT officials tells us that the new roundabouts are the series of roads and roundabout projects that are expected 
expected to uh, last through mid 2019. The new projects are costing roughly $8 million. Now coming up in the next half hour, we're telling you how roundabouts throughout the city could impact emergency vehicles when responding to emergency calls. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you, Marla Spence, live on US 41. Other news now, the man suspected of leaving the scene of a crash on I-75 that injured three children seriously has been arrested now. Here he is, 63-year-old Billy Catherwood, arrested yesterday morning. He's accused of DUI and leaving the scene of a crash on I-75. Two girls, ages six and eight, were thrown from the SUV, and also a young boy was injured as well. It happened near Apollo Beach in Sun City. FHP found the truck abandoned about 13 miles away from the accident in Manatee County. Well, a battle is happening between the chief judge of the 12th Circuit Court in Sarasota and Sheriff Tom Knight over the issue of guns in the courthouse. Now, the court is saying Sheriff Tom Knight can return his deputies to a post at the clerk of court office. The issue all started when State Senator Stubbe set out to test Judge Charles Williams' ban on bringing guns into the courthouse. Now, Stubbe argued he should be allowed to keep his firearm, Arnim, because the building isn't a gun-free zone since it doesn't have any actual courtrooms. So for years, concealed license permit holders' rights have been broken by a government entity, and I just don't think that's right. Sheriff Knight says his legal team will be taking a look at the appeals court ruling before he makes a decision on what to do next. If FPNL and Duke Energy have their way, you may foot the bill to recoup losses incurred from Hurricane Irma. Customers over three years would pay $381 million combined in storm costs, plus another $132 million to replenish the reserve fund. This means the average customer would pay just over $5 extra a month if they're with Duke and $4 a month if they're with FPL. This extra payment would last about three years. FPL customers are already paying $1.26 a storm charge for the hurricane season back in 2004 and 2005. We're also getting a preview of what the proposed Fort Hamer Commons shopping center may contain. A grocery store, restaurants, and other outlets could be coming to the 13-acre site in Parrish. Plans were submitted to Manatee County Building and Development Services earlier this month. These proposals come after plans to build a similar shopping center off 301 and Erie Road failed to move forward. There's a new push to help out a Suncoast musician who has made a career of helping others. That's right. George Levis has been in a wheelchair now for nearly three decades, and there are many that are trying to get him a new vehicle. Our AB7's Rick Adams has more from Venice. Well, this is the vehicle that belongs to George Lebes. The poor condition of the car, combined with him being in a wheelchair, has made life very difficult for him and his wife. This is what George Lebes does best, playing music and teaching it. Unfortunately, it's been very challenging for him to get around because his old car keeps breaking down, and it's not a vehicle that's ideal for someone in a wheelchair. Pulling the chair in and out and lifting, it has hand controls. Uh, my shoulders and my hands are, are worn out and uh, it's just um, it's getting to be too much. The process of getting in and out of the car takes several minutes for the 66 year old and he has to keep his fingers crossed that the car will start and get him to where he's going. Back in 1990, Lebes was in a motorcycle accident where a vehicle struck him. That left him paralyzed from the chest down. Lebes says his wife has had many health issues as well and has been out of work so there have been many financial difficulties including not being able to get a new vehicle. On top of that, he's also a colon cancer survivor. Because of my age and uh, the issue with the wheelchair and stuff, I need a van. The van that Lebes needs is a wheelchair ramp equipped minivan. Some folks at Troll Music in Venice, where Lebes is an instructor, recently started a GoFundMe page to help him out. At this point, they've been able to raise a few thousand dollars of the more than $20,000 needed for the van. They are hoping a lot more people will step up to help out. Some really wonderful people have come forward to donate what they can and help out. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, your heart breaks when you see him trying to get in and out of there. And he's got so much to offer. He does, the students love him. We love him. He's one of the easiest guys to work with. I mean, he's just great. George Lebes has been playing the saxophone, flute, clarinet, and other instruments now for around 50 years and has touched the lives of so many, especially his students. In addition to the GoFundMe page, you can help by stopping into Troll Music or calling them. I'm grateful for any uh, 
the help that can be given to me. And for more information on how you could assist George and to help him keep the music going, you can log on to our website at mysuncoast.com. Reporting from Venice, I'm Rick Adams, ABC7, your Suncoast News. An update we first told you about on Wednesday. Some Disney World hotels are moving ahead with their plans to toss out the Do Not Disturb signs in favor of room occupied signs as a new security measure. Right now, only resorts closest to the Magic Kingdom are affected by this policy change of just who can enter a guest room and why. They are the Polynesian, the Grand Floridian, the Contemporary, and Bay Lake resorts. Now, Disney confirms now, instead of, instead of having a do not disturb sign, guests will now have a room occupied sign instead. This is going to give Disney workers the right to enter any guest room, even when the sign is displayed, whether it be for maintenance, safety, security, or any other purpose. Employees will now be required to enter every room at least once a day. Disney declined to say whether or not the change was made because of the Las Vegas massacre. It did say it was made for a variety of reasons that do include security, safety, and the guest experience. A Florida police officer whose photo gained him internet fame while working after Hurricane Irma has resigned during an international or internal affairs investigation. Michael Hamill resigned from the Gainesville Police Department earlier this month. Police say investigators were looking into an anti-Semitic statements that he was making on his personal Facebook page, as well as allegations that he had consensual sex while on duty. Hamill gained attention after a selfie with two other Gainesville police officers was posted to the department's Facebook page following Hurricane Irma. 2017 has been a record low year for the number of juveniles arrested in Florida. The latest state numbers found that juvenile arrests dropped another, another 7% last year. That's the lowest in 42 years. Governor Scott said he will work with the legislature during the next session to pass a 10% pay raise now for juvenile detention and juvenile probation officers to reward them for their work. And yesterday we told you about Lee County's favorite eagle giving birth to a little eaglet named E10 the day after Christmas. Now her second hatchling has debuted named E11. The eaglets hatch from eggs laid in November by Harriet the Eagle. The female bald eagle has been nesting in North Fort Myers since 2006 after a local real estate agency installed environmentally friendly cameras. Harriet captured the attention of thousands of nature lovers worldwide. Yes, she did. Everybody's looking in there. It's amazing how well animal births do and like nature things do when it, and we're talking about going viral. Oh, I know. Everybody's it. tuning into the hippo, the giraffe being born, the eaglets being born. It's big news. We know that locally. It's huge. You just yes, want, it is. You want something happy. Something uh, positive to people, look at. I know. And cute. Yes. And, and cute. cuddly and furry. And, yes, that'll help Or feathery too. in this case. Right. Well, yes. our own cute and cuddly, me cuddly meteorologist Good. has forecasts. <laughs> uh, <we're laughs> furry too, huh? He's yeah. furry. Yeah. furry too. <laughs> we're looking at uh, a little bit of patchy fog out there this morning. We'll cover that in detail in a few minutes. I'm going to shave. <laughs> You're blushing, John. He's going to shave in commercial break. <laughs> also had first alert traffic. And look at some of the events going on this weekend. Around the Sun Coast, Linda Carson has her Sun Coast scene. And coming up a little later in the hour, we look at some of the crazy winter weather that is hitting all across the country. Stick around, we'll be right back. There's a live shot outside our window of the Rosemary District. Some fog out there. John's complete forecast coming up next. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. This is an important medical announcement. Talcum powder products from some of the best known brands have been linked to ovarian cancer. Any woman who has used a talcum powder product and has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that women with long-term use of talcum powder, including baby powder for feminine hygiene, can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to women who should have been warned about the risks of ovarian cancer with long-term use of talcum powder. Call the Talcum Powder Hotline 
If you or a loved one used talcum powder and were diagnosed or died from ovarian cancer, you must call now. Call 800-570-7599. 800-570-7599. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812-800-738-9812. Now you're ABC7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Air temperature comes in now at 58 degrees, a little bit cooler than it was 24 hours ago. We have a front that kind of sunk southward yesterday. It stalled out just to our south, but it will continue to press southward throughout the day. But the thing is, the dew point and the temperature are exactly the same. That's 100% relative humidity out there, and we do have some low-hanging cloud in places. The further south you go, the less cloud there is, and when there's less cloud and there's fairly light winds, that's the recipe for fog. And in those locations where the skies are a bit more clear, you've got a bit more fog. Now, generally, the winds are helping out here across the region. They're not calm. They are coming in at about 8 out of the north, and that does help to stir things up a little bit. But in wind-protected areas, you are more likely to see that fog develop. So, north wind now. Day before yesterday, we had an east wind. Then yesterday, a northeast wind established itself. And overnight, now it's a north wind draining down some cooler air. And today will be a significantly cooler day than we saw, this, say, toward the beginning of the work week. Uh, 58 degrees in Bradenton Parish. Mayaka coming in at 59. So is Lakewood Ranch. Sarasota at 58. Longboat at 60. Venice the same. And Inglewood ditto. Uh, Northport comes in at 59. And Punta Gorda also at 59, as does Arcadia. So across the region, you can kind of see the stream of crowds associated with a frontal boundary sinking southward. That frontal boundary is producing that little bit of cloud cover across the region. And that uh, cloud cover will start to mix away as we progress through the day. And that drier air sinks southward from the north. When that happens, I think we'll see a lot more sunshine around during the second half of the day than the first half of the day. I got some rain showers still in progress. In fact, you can see the cooler air here indicated by the pink. We have some freezing rain right along the coastline of the Carolinas. That's kind of an unusual thing that far south right along the coast. But there it is and an indication that there is some colder air around. In fact, Atlanta coming in in the 30s right now. We have across our region no rain and no rain expected. Don't see that uh, today or tomorrow, probably even on Sunday, even around the midnight hour, I think will stay dry. The colder air is sinking southward and expanding. That's the secondary cold front, the leading edge of it. And as I mentioned, look, Memphis, Tennessee, 26 degrees, Atlanta, 38. Even New Orleans coming in with 44 degrees, kind of a chill in the air there, no doubt about it. But it's the northeast and the central Great Lakes where the deep chill is really on. Lake effect snows continue in those locations. Front number one now carved its way through Florida, sinking southward. Front number two still located back to the north. That front will gradually sink southward across our region. So our front today sinks to the south, vanishes away. Then we'll watch that secondary front move into the area on Sunday night. An area of low pressure will develop on it. The exact track of that low pressure area will make a big difference in exactly how much rain we get on Monday. But it does look like Monday is the day for the, for the uh, rain event, if you will, for next week. Front will come through and cool things off. So a bit cooler today, rain-free 
with sunshine today and then we wait for that next cold front. North wind coming in at about 10 knots light chop today and look ahead. Looks like Sunday night into Monday day will be OK for the pineapple drop, but Monday itself will be kind of wet and then we'll filter in that cooler air for Tuesday and Wednesday. Back to you. All right, it is time now for your first alert traffic. Not looking too bad out there on the road, but it's still pretty early, so there's not a lot of congestion that's building up. See a little bit of a slowdown if you're heading into Sarasota this morning, already coming in from Ellington to Palmetto. In North County, not too bad there as well. Just a little bit of a slowdown out there on University Parkway and a little glitch on State Road 72. And if we're heading into South Sarasota County, that one is actually looking pretty good this morning. Not too bad out there today. Well, it should be a busy weekend. Some 25,000 people are expected to be in downtown. Sarasota for the pineapple drop on Sunday night. That's right. ABC's Linda Carson has more on this week's Suncoast scene. There'll be fireworks over the Sun Coast on December 31st as we go all out to celebrate New Year's Eve. At midnight, they blast off over the bay beside Marina Jack. That may be pretty late for the kids, but there are lots of other things for the whole family. And Lyson Bloom continues at Selby Gardens through December 30th. You think these flamingos look good now? Well, you see them light up. Selby Gardens is quite proud of these flamingos, plus the rest of the gardens. We have butterflies and dragonflies all lit up. Um, we have a, a magical tunnel that looks like a caterpillar. So there's just so much to see and do when you come to Lights and Bloom. And you want to see something that will take your breath away? Sailor Circus presents High Flying Holidays at the Sailor Circus Arena through December 30th. The kids, they've been practicing for months on the flying trapeze, on the high wire, on the slack rope, tumbling, acrobatics, you, you name it, these kids do it. Superb juggling act, uh, very exciting. I mean, these kids are juggling fire, for goodness sake. And you can hear world-class music right here in your own backyard. The 17-day Pearlman Music Program Suncoast Winter Residency is in full swing in the tent behind USF. You can witness some of the most promising young musicians in the world learn and play under the direction of violinist Itzhak Pearlman. There are two to three events each and every day um, between Christmas and New Year's, well, the end of the winter residency, which officially ends January 6th. Want to party New Year's Eve? The fun starts on Old Main Street in Bradenton at 5 p.m. The folk rock band, The Beat Down, plays at 6, and the band Have Gun will travel at 10. There'll be vendors, crafts, and the ball will drop at midnight, welcoming in 2018. There's also a big New Year's Eve party on Main Street in Sarasota. Live music, vendors serving food and drink, and lots of activities for all ages. And then ABC7's own Bob Harrigan will give the countdown. And the pineapple will drop at the stroke of midnight here at Lemon and Main. No better place in the world to ring in 2018. Linda Carson, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Well, nothing really new at the box office this New Year's weekend, but if you're staying in, here's a few movies new and streaming on DVD. First up, The Mountain Between Us. This one stars Kate Winslet and Idris Elba. They're two strangers who agree to split the cost of a private plane when their commercial flights are canceled. Well, after the plane crashes, the two have to struggle together to survive. Now, if you buy the DVD, it's got some great extras that include how they shot this film in the wilderness, which wasn't easy for either of the two main stars. Also new on DVD this week, a good one that just went right under the radar, Brawl in Cell Block 99. Now, we're used to seeing Vince Vaughn always in the same roles, but I promise you, he's really different in this one. He's so good. He stars as an ex-boxer that lands in jail. Once he gets there, he gets blackmailed by another inmate that threatens the life of his baby son if he doesn't do his dirty work in jail. And finally, Ray, you need to put this one on your bucket list. One of my absolute favorites on Netflix returns. A lot of people love this series. Season four of Black Mirror starts streaming today. It's the closest you can get. It's kind of like a modern day Twilight Zone. There's all these great stories, each all on their own, about how our modern technology can go a little crazy. There's always great cameos from big names. Jodie Foster is even directing a few of the oh, episodes yeah. this season. It is one to check out in each episode is self-contained, so you don't have to watch the whole series. You yeah. can just watch one. They're fantastic. Yeah, I'm such a recent Netflix convert. I'm still catching up on big shows from 10 years ago. Here's the list right here. <laughs> These know. are all the Netflix shows you need to watch. It's an amazing <laughs> underworld. We shouldn't promote Netflix too much on broadcast TV right that now. That is right. You should just do that in moderation while yeah. still watching lots yeah. of ABC7. Exactly. <laughs>
All right, well, coming up on Good Morning Suncoast, it is known as the Super Bowl of electronics. Every gadget you can possibly imagine that's going to be coming out next year. We've got a preview of the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. And next half hour, some northeastern states are suing the EPA over pollution from some midwestern states. We'll explain coming up. So many possibilities worth exploring. Minnesota flooring. And for a limited time, Minnesota Flooring is offering you unbelievable pricing on tile and laminate. Porcelain tile, only $1.59. Ceramic tile, 99 cents. And 16 by 16 tile, $1.19. Laminate flooring is only 99 cents. But these prices won't last. Don't miss out on these great deals. Hurry into Minnesota Flooring today. If you're between 50 and 85 years old, call the number on your screen right now for free information on how to save your family thousands of dollars. We're Family Love Plans, and we've been helping families just like yours for over 30 years. The average funeral today can cost up to $10,000 or more, but the most you'll get from government benefits is just $255. How will your family pay the difference? At Family Love Plans, we can help you and your family. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam and your plan can't be canceled. Better still, your rate will never go up and your benefits will never go down. Get your free information about our senior plans. Just answer a few simple questions and receive approval right over the phone. Call 1-800-707-3608. That's 1-800-707-3608. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Well, it is pretty cold across the country. How cold, you ask? Well, cold enough to perform this amazing but classic science experiment in New Hampshire. The combination of sub-zero temperatures and biting winds can freeze boiling water poured out of a pot before it even hits the ground. This is one of my favorites. I uh, promise you, we did this back in Michigan in the day. The state saw wind chill values as low as 35 degrees below zero overnight. Not only is that enough to freeze that boiling water before it hits the ground, it can also cause frostbite in as little as just 10 minutes. So you have wow. to be really careful. Now, the warmest temperatures expected in Mount Washington are next Thursday. That's when it's going to reach a balmy, put your bathing suit on. <laughs> Negative two degrees. I think about our friends up north each morning when I leave the house and think, should I wear a coat today? No, I guess not. I think the real question is, should I wear shorts or pants today? <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer to that. Exactly. Hey, you can catch us on Instagram and also on Twitter and Facebook as well. We also update daily content to our respective Facebook pages. Check that out. Some behind the scenes look of what Stephanie is really like behind the scenes. Oh, it's scandalous, It'll people. Shock scandalous. You. A lot of smoke and mirrors going on here. <laughs> Do you think she seems nice? Also, well, come on, they're all posts about Star Wars and nerdy true. things and football, you know, come on. Also, check out our app. We've updated it, so make sure you check out that. The App Store is open now for business. It is 24-7. Ray himself mans it. All you have to do is look under Ray's favorite app, and you'll find My Sun Coast, or you can also look at WWSB. And, of course, you'll find those apps right there for you. All the latest breaking news and weather all the time. You're on a, you're on a roll. I am. I'm really on a roll this morning. <laughs> Let's move this on. <laughs> the Super Bowl of Electronics, also known as the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas is right around the corner. Here's today's Tech Bytes report. In today's Tech Bytes, getting ready for the Super Bowl of Electronics. The Consumer Electronics Show kicks off in Las Vegas on January 9th. Techies believe virtual reality will have a big place at the show, especially wireless headsets. Also, car companies are expected to show off their self-driving innovations. One device we know will be rolled out at the show is LG's new entry into the smart home speaker market. It's called the ThinQ speaker. It's powered by Google Assistant, and analysts say it's a big win for LG over its rival, Samsung. And remember the praise heaped on Apple's flagship store in Chicago right after it opened? Well, 
that store is getting some criticism now that Chicago's winter has taken hold. And that's because it's surrounded by caution signs because of falling snow and icicles. The flat roof hangs over sidewalks, which are closed. Ah, uh, bad thing in Chicago. <laughs> Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Tech Bites, brought to you by the American Cancer Society. I just finished months of chemo, but I don't want to talk about months. I want to talk about years. Treatments have gotten better, so I'm hoping for good years ahead. That's thanks to research funded by the American Cancer Society. The same folks giving me free rides to treatments, insurance advice, and a place to stay during chemo. I need that stuff like you don't know. And now that you do, please give at cancer.org. There's only one National Orange Juice brand that only uses 100% American oranges. Simply Orange and Tropicana ship in juice from overseas. Only Florida's Natural grows all of our oranges in Florida. Great taste, naturally. One, or two, or both. Because at VisionWorks, when you buy a pair of glasses, you get a second pair at no additional cost. So, an extra pair for you, or a pair to share. Whatever you do, you'll see a better you. VisionWorks. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. During the past 10 years, Tidewell Hospice volunteers have provided more than 1 million hours of service. They sit with patients, giving caregivers a break. They work in offices. They take their furry friends on pet therapy visits. They even clown around. Every task performed by a volunteer makes a difference in the lives of our patients and their families. Join Tidewell's volunteer team. They're truly one in a million. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Keep up with the Suncoast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them, and she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast, the Alabama Senate race is finally a done deal. We're going to tell you what officially happened yesterday. Plus, we'll show you what a man did to avoid police in Missouri, and we'll tell you if he was able to get away. And caught on camera, a cafe owner fights off this armed robber right in his store. Those stories and more are coming at you right now on Good Morning Sun Coast.
Live from the ABC7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. There's a little misty shot there outside our window looking at the Rosemary District. Believe it or not, Sarasota is off in the distance there. There is some Sarasota out there. Not nearly as bad of a fog, though, <clears throat> that we saw last week. That was, like, hard to even drive through. That caused so many traffic issues. It's really going to depend on where you are. The further yeah. south you go, where we have a little bit less cloud cover, the more likely you are to encounter some dense fog. But um, it's not widespread enough that a dense fog no. advisory has been issued yet. So it's kind of going to be hit and miss. Not too bad. Out there. Uh, taking a look at the fog maps, you can see at at uh, Punta Gorda, we have a half a mile visibility, which is still drivable, certainly. And in our area, uh, in uh, downtown Sarasota area, uh, about a four mile visibility. Uh, that's at the airport, so uh, not too bad along the immediate coastline either. Of course, things can change. And up near Arcadia and inland areas, you are likely to have a little bit thicker fog and to the point south as well. Temperatures a little cooler this morning, coming in at 58 degrees in uh, Sarasota, also in Bradenton. Inland temperatures about the same right along the immediate coast, a degree or two warmer. A little bit of cloud cover, as I said, but to the south of us, that's where the cloud cover is uh, it's a little less thick and a little more patchy, so you are more likely to see the fog in those locations. Otherwise, I think we'll see that uh, cloud cover kind of mix away today and lead to a little bit more sunshine. Fog lifts by 7, by 12. We'll have partly cloudy to partly sunny skies with a temperature climbing up to the low 70s today. That's as warm as we get, a little bit cooler by 3 p.m. The uh, complete forecast coming up in just a few. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic right now. Not much to alert you about in Manatee County. Looking pretty quiet so far this morning on this Friday, final day, weekday of the year. Northern half of Sarasota <laughs> County mostly clear right now. And south half, not much to speak of at 532 on your Friday morning. But there is a big traffic story that will affect almost all of us. Traffic will be reduced to one southbound lane on US 41 in the next few weeks between 10th and 14th streets. And it's also construction on a new roundabout can start to ramp up. Our Marla Spence joins us live now from US 41. Marla, tell us a little about what they want to do out there. Well, Stephanie and Ray, right behind me is where that new roundabout will be placed here on US 41. Now, construction for that roundabout is expected to start early January. Now, with new roundabouts uh, popping up all across the Sarasota area, we wondered if fire trucks or emergency vehicles were impacted by any way by roundabouts throughout the city. Now, we all know roundabouts help to slow down speeding drivers and also help the flow of traffic. We asked the Sarasota Fire Department whether that could cause a delay in response time during an emergency, the Sarasota Fire Chief Michael Regner says when responding, crews use emergency lights and sirens as always to get drivers out the way. When going through a roundabout, he says roundabouts doesn't pose a big issue for the department when responding. Roundabouts are approved through the fire department to make sure that the, the turning radiuses for our largest truck make, make it through the roundabout. Now that includes coming off the roadway on the center little uh, curbing. They call it Miami curbing on the inside. So we look at the specifications of each roundabout. And if you see our ladder trucks, which are one of our largest vehicles, go up on that inner, inner circle of the roundabout. That is actually made for doing that. Chief, Reg Chief Regner says roundabouts are reinforced so they won't crack or break when driving on them. So that is just one good thing to know that it won't cause any issues for the fire department or any emergency vehicles when responding. Construction here on US 41 is expected to start in early January. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks, Marla. The Trump administration is repealing an Obama-era rule that would set standards for fracking on federal land. The Interior Department posted a notice of repeal before the new rules are set to go into effect today. It was passed two years ago to address environmental concerns related to hydraulic fracturing. Now, companies would have been required to disclose the chemicals they use in fracking, but the Interior Department says the rule would be an unnecessary burden that would hold back oil and gas development. Federal research found that fracking can contamin contaminate groundwater, soil, and air, but that incidents in those cases are rare. Fracking uses fluids forced underground at high pressure to recover oil and natural gas. Environmentalists say the move can put people and wildlife at risk, and court challenge is possible. And finally, folks, we have a winner in Alabama's special Senate election. It is officially 
officially Democrat Doug Jones. He was certified, did we mention officially, by Alabama's governor, attorney general, and secretary of state. Jones, of course, beat Republican Roy Moore by about 20,000 votes earlier this month, but Moore is refusing to concede. He filed a last-minute court challenge on Wednesday asking for a delay in certification. Moore claimed voter fraud. He also requested a new special election, but a circuit judge denied his challenge on Thursday. Moore was accused of sexual assault and harassment of teenage girls, which he denied, saying he even took a polygraph test and passed. Eight northeastern states are suing the federal government over pollution blowing in from the Midwest. In 2013, they asked the Environmental Protection Agency to impose tougher controls on nine Midwestern states. Well, that request was denied last month. In its denial, the EPA said that there were other programs that would be better able to handle the issue of smog blowing across state lines. So they've now filed a federal lawsuit arguing that the denial violates the Clean Air Act and asking the court to force the EPA to accept their petition. Well, with the year winding down, it's time for a look at what your tax moves are and what moves that you may you need to make this time of the year. Yeah, CNBC outlined some tips that might affect you. Some of the gains you've made might be offset with capital losses, but keep in mind, you want to offset a short-term gain with a short-term loss and a long-term gain with a long-term loss. You still with me? And it's best <laughs> not to invest just before a distribution date. You'll be getting a distribution for gains realized before you even owned the fund. And don't overlook charity donations as well. You want to make those before the end of the year, so that might just be today. Some recommend using appreciated property rather than cash. This allows you to take a deduction for the full value of the property without incurring a taxable gain. According to NASA, the first full moon of 2018 will take place on New Year's Eve. This is kind of cool. A supermoon occurs when the moon becomes full on the same day that it reaches its perigee. That is the point in the moon's elliptical orbit when it is closest to Earth. Another supermoon will be taking place on January 31st. And according to NASA, that one's going to feature a total lunar eclipse. Wow. Look at this video. An Oregon man drove off the end of a pier in a desperate attempt to escape from police. You can see his pickup <laughs> truck splash into the Columbia River as police chased him. The driver got out of the truck and he tried to swim away from officers, but he quickly turned back around and swam back to the pier. <laughs> that does not work. Never mind. He was treated for hypothermia and taken to jail, given a nice warm orange outfit. Police originally wanted to arrest him for a suspected trespassing and parole violation. He is now also facing charges of reckless driving, third degree escape, and attempt to elude police unsuccessfully. More video for you. A cafe owner in Houston went toe to toe with an armed robbery suspect. The gunman told the owner to open the safe. He put a gun to his head. The owner wasn't going to have it, though. The owner eventually won the brawl, grabbing the gun, shooting the robber seven times. He missed. 0 for 7. Bad guy escapes in a getaway car. Police later tracked him down and made the arrest. How can you miss seven times? I know. We're all like, did you just say seven times? How yeah. can you get into a brawl with someone holding a gun at you? Right? There's, There's so many questions. How can you, how can you rob a store? Yeah. <laughs> start, right. Start right. with that. Right. Boy, I tell you, I'm glad, it, I'm glad he was okay, though, in, in that uh, Yeah. In that yes, yes. We have, across our region, some uh, pretty changeable weather, I think, over the next couple of days. It's going to be interesting weather-wise. Uh, this morning, we have a chance of a little bit of fog. Today, it'll be a little bit cooler. And over the weekend, nice. But then big changes. Talk all about that coming up. Luke. All right. Talk to you soon. Also, first alert traffic and long hours and high stress come with the job. Uh huh. That's right. But is being a reporter or a news anchor any less healthy than any other profession? Yes. I feel like we should pay attention yes. to the next story. There's a surprising news study out. We've got that for you next. Here's a peek outside our window. Some fog in the horizon. John's full forecast, which changes in 2018, comes in in some strange weather. That and more news on the way. Listen to this important message. If you owe money to the IRS, you will want to hear this. Penalties and interest compound daily on your back taxes, putting you under a mountain of debt. Tax 10,000 has years of experience connecting people with tax resolution specialists. Working through the IRS Fresh Start program, they will handle all the necessary forms, and if you qualify, you may end up saving thousands of dollars. Call Tax 10,000 at 800-817-1064. 
If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service three times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317 Go online or visit a Target store today. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs and you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals, and I discovered how much I enjoyed them. This is a required Becoming monthly a test of the emergency alert system. Have this Find been an actual emergency or dangerous situation, official messages and directions would have followed the alert tone. This test is brought to you by the Florida Division of Emergency Management, the Florida Association of Broadcasters, uh, and your local broadcast station or cable provider. This, this concludes the required monthly test. Time. Your kisses. Your kisses. You heard how loud I know, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Serving part-time as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment to get an edge in the civilian world. Learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you at NationalGuard.com. Now your ABC7 first alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So first alert weather news of the morning. We got a little bit of patchy fog out there, especially in areas from Venice southward. Right now visibility is holding it about half a mile, which is probably not going to slow your commute all that much. You just have to use those low beam headlights and keep a little more distance between your cars. Otherwise, in some areas, you may see the visibility over the next hour or so drop below that. If it drops to about a quarter mile, then you got some problems. Then you're going to probably have a slower commute. Um, in inland areas around Arcadia particularly, you may see that occurring sooner rather than later. This should mix away pretty well as we head into the dawn hours, so there's not that much time left for that fog to develop. 58 degree temperature, 58 degree dew point, 100 percent relative humidity. So the atmosphere is primed for the production of fog, but winds are up just a little bit. And from areas Venice northward, we do have a little extra cloud cover around. So those two things aid in reducing the amount of fog that could possibly form. But south of Venice, through Inglewood into Northport, down toward Punta Gorda, a better chance of seeing some of that fog form. Temperatures across the region generally a little bit cooler than they were yesterday by a couple of degrees. We have that cooler air that filtered in with that frontal boundary sinking southward. Located just to our south, that front is stalled at the moment, but it will continue to press southward as it gets a little bit more energy and things shift around in the atmosphere. The cloud cover will mix away and we'll be left with some nicer weather, I think some sunnier weather as we head into mid-morning and into the afternoon. Rain showers departing the coastal regions, all airport hubs look good for us and certainly there's no rain falling here 
locally. So all in all, things look pretty nice. Foreboding today, north wind comes in a little bit lighter than it did yesterday. Out of the north initially shifting a little bit more north northeast as we head through time at about 10 knots. That'll bring you a light chop with two foot seas. Forecast shaping up like this over the next several days should be all right on Sunday for the bald pineapple drop. We'll be looking at, uh, I think, a little bit of cloud cover, but generally fair weather with temperatures around 60, not too bad. Monday, a little area of low pressure increases our rain chances significantly, and our temperatures also lower. And over the course of the first work week of the new year, we'll be looking at some significantly chillier air. Back to you. Did, did he say bald pineapple? Did he just say bald pineapple? What bald. exactly is that? Bald pineapple? Don't they all wear <laughs> Pineapples wear hair pieces, I, I thought. I think so. It's a big hair piece right on the top. All right, well, no bald pineapples in your first alert traffic this morning. It's actually running pretty smooth. You have your typical slowdowns if you're heading into Sarasota from Ellington or Palmetto. In North Sarasota, just a little bit of a slowdown on 301, but looking pretty good. And again, if you're headed into Port Charlotte, just a little bit of congestion right there on 41, but no major hiccups out there. Well, in this hour's Health Smart, if artificial sweeteners sound too good to be true, that's because they are, according to a new study. The Canadian Medical Journal put a damper on the idea that switching to food and drinks sweetened with artificial sweeteners rather than sugar has any major health benefits. Turns out sugar substitutes such as aspartame and saccharin are still fattening, especially if you have them in large quantities. Nutritionists are still studying the long-term effects of artificial sweeteners since their debut was relatively recent. All right, next, you would think the long, weird hours and low pay would make us here at ABC7 supremely stressed out. But that's actually not the case, according to a recent study. Forty journalists from newspapers, magazines, television, and online outlets were selected to participate in the study that assessed their overall health. Surprisingly, we journalists, on average, experienced physical stress no more than the average person. Even our blood pressure tests, they actually came out normal. <laughs> but one thing we as journalists do tend to do that just might be a little bit of a problem, we drink way too much. And that includes I don't know. both alcohol and sweet, <laughs> sweet, very necessary I caffeine. We don't I don't drink that much coffee, do we? Cheers, no. This is <laughs> like normal. We're fine. There's nothing to see over here. Nothing to good. see. Nothing to see well, over I, here. Well, I like that study. I hope it's true. <laughs> I do too. We're normal. Uh, did they talk to the morning anchors too, or just evening uh, people? We need to in investigate that part. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 552 up next, your day's top news headlines, and a community comes together to help a canine, but first, a peek outside at some foggy conditions. The weather is up next. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with Mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. This is an important medical announcement. Talcum powder products from some of the best known brands have been linked to ovarian cancer. Any woman who has used a talcum powder product and has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer may be entitled to substantial compensation. Studies show that women with long-term use of talcum powder, including baby powder for feminine hygiene, can increase the risk of contracting ovarian cancer. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost, and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to women who should have been warned about the risks of ovarian cancer with long-term use of talcum powder. 
call the talcum powder hotline. If you or a loved one used talcum powder and were diagnosed or died from ovarian cancer, you must call now. Call 800-570-7599. 800-570-7599. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. I'm Alan Cohn. Working vacation, President Trump stops by a local fire station and claims he has signed more legislation than any other president. Really? Tonight on ABC7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Here are some of the top stories that we're following for you on the Sun Coast today. An overnight fire in the Bronx killed at least 12 people. The mayor says it's one of the worst fires in New York in 25 years. Plus, the power companies might be passing on the cost of Hurricane Irma to you. Customers over three years are going to be paying a whole lot more to replenish the reserve fund. And FHP charged a man with hit and run and DUI after a crash on I-75 in Southern Hillsborough County. And injured three children. He was later arrested in Manatee County. That's our news for now. More news next hour. Stay with us.